Amen. And it's not based on your actions. It's based on the fact that before you were formed in your mother's womb, he called you. Yes. Wow. So there's nothing that you did, can do, or will do that's going to separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Because he knows your end from your beginning. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nothing we do surprises him. Right. He's like, I already know it. Right. Amen. But to be able to accept his love. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus has commanded us to love. We're to love each other as he loves us. People will know we are disciples of Christ when we love each other. Let's look at John chapter 13, and I'm going to read verses 34 through 35. People will know we are disciples of Christ when we love each other. Amen? So John chapter 13, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and the Word of God reads, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other other just as I have loved you you should love each other your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples so what does that mean that means when people see us in the world we're supposed to be reflecting the love of Christ amen so love is not just an expression expressed with words to love is to act amen there are many examples throughout the Bible that God that shows us how much God loves us. You know, John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. So what does that tell us? We can't pick and choose who we love. Amen? Amen. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 we're going to read verses 4 through 7 first corinthians chapter 13 and we're going to read verses 4 through 7 and when you think about this and you think about how we conduct ourselves through the course of the week and i'm not responsible for anybody's actions but my own That's right. That's right. amen you're not responsible for anybody's actions but your own so the word of god says Love is patient and kind. That's right. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Mm -hmm. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Yeah. 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 So if we were to take a survey in your families today, would they say that you are a loving person? No. Mm -hmm. Amen? Or are you rude and irritable and unkind? Oh. Amen? Because even when we have the worst of days, that does not give us an excuse to act like we want to act. Amen? Amen. 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 And even when someone else treats us unkindly, we're not to return the action. We're to return the action with love. Amen. Amen. Because that's what Jesus said. He says, I command you to love one another. Amen. And can you imagine as he was walking that road, that bearing that cross for us? He could have thrown it down at any time. He could have said, Father, these are ungrateful, unworthy people, and I'm not doing this. But what did he do? He proceeded to the cross. And he took that punishment that we could not take. Amen. He paid that price for us Amen. that we could not pay. Amen. And even when he was suffering and in pain, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But what is our response when we're hurt? Or when someone has talked about us, we want God to get them. But he didn't get us when we made the wrong choices or said unkind words. So the Lord is saying we have to love. And love is an action word. Amen? So it tells us what love is and what it's not. All who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we are commanded to love. We don't have an excuse. We can't say that we didn't, we didn't know Jesus. We've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen? Amen? And he says, because of this, you are commanded to love. You don't have to like the person. You don't have to like their actions, but you are commanded to love. Amen. Because love will cause you to do things and help someone who has been mean to you. 
Amen? It is not drawn, driven by how we are treated or what we feel we're entitled to. We have been commanded to show the love of Christ wherever we go. Amen? Amen? And then I was thinking about this verse. The next one is John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. And as I was standing there in the kitchen, and I was like, you know, because we've always, the Lord just gave me another view of this message, amen, of this scripture. So John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17, it says, After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Amen. So Jesus asked Peter a question. And Peter responded. And then the Lord told him, then act it out. And don't do it out of obligation. Don't do it out of a sense of responsibility. You do it in the spirit of love. And that's what God is asking us. And you think about everything that God has done for you. And everything that he's brought you through. How can we not show the love of Christ? How can we not show? And then we can tell people that we love them. But you're never there to help them. Somebody call you, you got an excuse why you can't do it that day. Love is not always comfortable. Sometimes loving is inconvenient. Amen? But the father does not sleep. It says he neither slumbers nor sleeps. So he is always on call. Amen. Amen. And we want him to hear us every time we call out to him. Amen. Because why? Because you said that you're my daddy and that you love me. You said that you would hold no good thing from me. So I'm coming to you asking for this. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Amen. But just as easily as it is for God to extend his love to us, we've got to be able to extend it to others. Amen. That doesn't mean that you've got someone calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning for a, a full month, but maybe they do call that one time. Are you going to look at your phone and put it down and act like I didn't see that? Oh, I didn't hear that vibration? Or we're going to say, oh, you know my phone was on silent. I'm sorry I missed your call. Because we don't know what they have need of. Or we send that instant message. You know how you can be on the phone and you still send a text message? I'll call you back. And we never call. I did that to Zanika. Yes, did. <laughs> <laughs> and then she had to call me back. Amen. But because she loves me, she forgave me. And she said, it's okay. That's why I'm calling you back. Amen. But we have to be able to extend this love. Love in action. It's not about just, oh, Deidre, I love you. And I know she may have a need, but I act like I turn a blind eye because I know, Lord, you're not telling me to do that because you know it's a purse I want to buy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you want me to give up my purse money to help someone? <laughs> and that's how real it can be for some people. Right, right. But the Lord is saying that love in action. That you press beyond your feelings sometimes. Sometimes you're so tired. Amen? But then somebody reaches out for help. What are you going to do? To, to serve with love. Because that's what God has called us to. Amen? Amen. And so you think about it. God has even called us to love that co-worker that asks upteen questions. Woo. It's like they asked me one more question, right? That police officer, that you get mad at him for stopping you, and he gave you a ticket, but you were the one speeding, but we still supposed to show love. 
Amen? Because they have a tough job. They do. Amen? And we kind of, you know, we don't want to be judged, but we tend to judge them that all of them are bad. And that's not true. They have families that they want to get back home to. Amen? You meet that mean clerk in the store. I don't know what you woke up with this morning, but it's going to be okay. But I'm not going to make your job harder for you. You know how we go through the store and we know we need to take it back to where we picked it up from. But we're like, I'm going to just leave it here because it's job security for somebody. <laughs> no, you're making somebody's job harder. And that's not showing love. Amen? And then somebody looking at us and saying, I thought that they was a Christian. Look what they just did. But God is saying we have to love. And love requires action. It's not just about words. We've got to follow through. Amen? Amen. So Jesus asked Peter, and he gave him an action to do. And the Lord is calling us to action. Because there is a hurting world out there. And we're to show the love of Christ. Amen? And when we accept the love of the Lord, it will empower us to love others by the Holy Spirit. Because he don't want to help us love some people. Because we know they rule, and we know they can be ignorant, but what do we expect when they don't know Jesus? Why do you expect them to act any differently? Amen? Now, when you say that you love the Lord and you act like that, then I have something to say. Because what Jesus are you serving? That's causing your behavior to be that way. Amen? And we have to be watchful. How am I conducting myself? What is my attitude saying? Amen? Amen. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Because we do, we have to be mindful of our thoughts, our attitudes, and our disposition towards others. Because we're saying that we are Jesus lovers. But every time since the hand going to work, she's snapping somebody's head off. Just use that for an example. <laughs> and like, what did Jesus do to you that you're so mad today? Amen? Just like we say to Monday. Monday is coming. Monday is tomorrow. We're going to have a great day in the name of Jesus. Regardless of what we're going through. Regardless of what we're going through. Regardless of what we're facing. Amen? God is in control. Amen? So Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. And this one I'm reading from the modern English version first. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of of the flesh because our flesh demands a response when the enemy is poking at us we want to respond a certain way but the word of God is saying that if you walk in the spirit you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh amen so if we walk in the spirit we won't try to get that person back that hurt us we won't try to put our foot out and make somebody trip and fall because that's what they did to us. We're not stabbing someone in the back with our mouth and the things that we're saying. Amen? Because God can say a lot of stuff about us. He can really uncover us if he desired to. But because of his love for us. Amen? So why don't we protect one another? That doesn't say we condone sin. But I'm not going to put your business out there. Because I love you. It's nobody business. When you ask me for a prayer, when you say, I got a prayer request, I want you to keep it to yourself, then I'm keeping it to myself. Amen. 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 But sometimes, and it's happened in church, you've shared something with the pastor, and next thing you know, it's a part of the message. Amen. <laughs> and then you hurt. And then you got all these church hurt. It's like, well, why did he have to use that example? Why did you have to say that that way? Knowing that they're talking about you on a slip, you know? And that's not love. And that's why I tend to use myself. Because I don't want to offend anyone. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I tend to use my own self as the example. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. And the word of God reads, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. 
Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So it says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. So if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then this is the kind of fruit that is produced in your life. And if you're running short on something, then God, I need a fresh anointing. Because it's there. Joy is yours. Peace is yours. Love is yours. You have a choice. Amen? Because that's the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. And this is the fruit that I want to be seen in my life. So what does that mean for me? I have to watch what I partake of. I have to watch the conversations that I get involved in because I want the fruit to be evident. Amen? But if I'm watching things that's negative, things that's scary, whatever the case may be, then that's what's going to be made manifest. Amen? So the Lord is saying, this is what the fruit of the, this is the fruit the Spirit produces. So you have to look at your life. What fruit is evident in your life today? Are you letting the Holy Spirit have his way? Amen? Because it says that if those who belong to Christ, that we've nailed these passions to the cross. And that doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. We do. We make mistakes all the time. But the blood is there that we can ask forgiveness for and we can keep pressing on. Because like Brandon said, it's some things that's happened. We can't take it out of our story now. We can't rip the pages out. How, can you imagine somebody giving you a book and they ripped out the sections that they didn't like? Because <laughs> then you're reading an incomplete story. Amen? So this is part of my story now. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whatever the case may be. But I stand before you redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so with love being such a crucial commandment, what does the enemy try to do? He tries to crush it. So Proverbs 4, 23, it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. Amen? Guard your heart. And that means sometimes you have to guard it against family. Because when I get around you, then these are the emotions that follow. So in order for me to guard my heart, then I'm going to limit contact. Doesn't mean that we don't love the person. We're just exercising some wisdom. Amen? We're exercising some wisdom because the world will take everything that we have to give. You know that there are people in your circle right now that will suck you dry emotionally, mentally, yes. physically, if you allow them to. Yes. And that's why we have to let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in our relationships. Amen. Amen. Because yes, God is commanding us to love, but that doesn't mean I just lay down and let you walk on top of me. Right. Amen. Amen. If I find that you tend to be one that can't, you know, pay me back, then maybe money is not what I give to help you. Right. So when you say that you need um, groceries or something, then maybe I'll go to the store and get them for you. Instead of giving you the money. Instead of giving you the money. Amen. Earring came out. <laughs> Amen. 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 And Brandon is laughing at me. Because <laughs> I'm just, you know, a down-to-earth person. Amen. Amen. Yes, you are. I'm not going to try, you know, this is one of my favorite dresses. <laughs> I'm diverting for a minute. This is one of my favorite dresses. I told my girls, I said, I wish I could have one in like all of my favorite colors. Because <laughs> I would do that. You know? And some people would be like, oh, but you're going to be on YouTube or whatever. Whatever. Right. It's not about this. Come on, Pastor. When we come to the house of the Lord, it's about His Word. Come on, Pastor. I could have you wearing the same dress every week. Amen. And it would not phase me at all. It'd be like, I'm dressed. God has provided. Let's move on. Amen. Because there's a word that God wants to give us. Amen. And the word today is love and action. Love and action. 
Amen. And I want to apologize to Brother Greg because I did not check on him this week because he was sick last week. And I was thinking about this lesson and I was like, you know what, Lord, you know what? God, you can get me every time. Because I said, at least I could have done with send a text message. You know? Praise the Lord. Looking good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Love in action. Showing love. Because that's what it's about. Because that's what God did for us. When we was in our pit of yes, despair, yes, he yes. reached in and picked us Thank up. You, Lord. He yes. didn't worry about what we had on, Jesus. how dirty we were. Right. All he did, he saw us through the eyes Thank of love. You, and we need to start looking at each Thank other you, through the eyes of love. Oh, Amen? Yes. Yes. So Psalm 5110 says, create in me a clean heart. Thank you, Lord. A clean heart. Yes. And renew a right spirit within me. Because the things that we go through will try to corrupt mm -hmm. the love God has given us. Oh, Amen. Amen. And so when we see ourselves bearing Ooh. on that course of Jesus. being bitter or resentful mm -hmm. or not forgiving or being boastful or being proud, God created me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. Renew a right spirit within me. Don't let me just be Jesus. talking your word, Lord, right. and not following up. Because that's what James says. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer. And a doer loves in action. Amen? Love it. Love Let's look at Matthew chapter 22. Verses 37 through 40. Matthew chapter 22. Verses 37 through 40. And the word of God reads, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Amen? Amen. So when you think about it, you should not kill. If you love, you won't. You should not steal. If you love, you won't. So we need to let the love of God consume us. Consume us. That that negative stuff is kicked out. Amen? That all the negative stuff is kicked out because we're consumed by the love of God. And that doesn't mean that we don't get we don't feel hurt because we do. But what do we do? We run to the altar. Right. Right. We take it back to God. Lord, this has happened. Mm -hmm. So we pray for this person. Amen. Pray for that slow person in front of you in traffic. Yeah. That you just want to blow your horn. <laughs> or at that McDonald's that has two lines. <laughs> and that person sits there waiting to see which line is going to move first. <laughs> And I confess, I have yelled out the window, choose a side. <laughs> regardless, we're still going to be sitting here. Right. But the line backs up into the street because they can't follow directions. But we have to love. <laughs> we have to love. Because these are the things that, that irritate us yeah. throughout the course yeah. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you drive by someone, and they have their audacity to have their cell phone in their hand. Right. You try, and then it's like, that's why you was driving so right. slow. Because yeah. right. you're trying to do something on your phone. Then I just want to have all these kind of signs made up. Get off the cell phone. Get in the slow lane. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just get on by my business. Right. But love. Jesus. We have to love. Because even when we do our craziness. That's true, Pastor. God says, that's still my daughter. Yes. Amen. That's still my son. Amen. We're going to make mistakes. Yes. But owning up to those things. Amen? Amen. Amen? And let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. But talking about love in action. Showing the love of God. And I know, confession, I have to watch my facial expressions. Because <laughs> I'm going to be bad Because it's like, okay. And I just, because then we have those phones. <laughs> That they can see you, 
And it's like, okay, Lord, let me reflect you today. Help me, Jesus. Because sometimes it's like, I feel like every button is being pushed at me. And it's like, Lord, help me to show love. Amen. Regardless, help me to show love for you. Amen. Amen. So let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. And the word of God reads, Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we already know the enemy is going to try mm -hmm. yeah. to push our buttons every day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. That nurse at the hospital mm -hmm. trying to get other fellows to do her do their job. Mm -hmm. Amen. When she has to say, "Nope, this we do not have the authority to do this," you've got to take this on yourself. Mm -hmm. But being able to speak the truth in love. That's right. Have those tough conversations. And that's hard for us because we never want to hurt someone's feelings. Amen. That's right. So God, show us how to confront the issue instead of just sweeping it under the carpet. Because some of us have carpets that's like heels in our home. <laughs> because of issues that we've just shoved underneath right. there. Right. And I don't want to offend you and I don't want to set you off this morning, so I'm not gonna say anything. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bide my time. And it gets higher and higher until there's an explosion. Right. Instead of speaking the truth in love and saying, Brandon, why did you take the last caffeine free Coke out of the car? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you all just want to see me go off in this house. Because I know what I left in there. And I expect to go back and get it. And then when it's not, <laughs> Amen. 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 Or when he leaves his laptop or the mouse to his laptop. So I'm trying to maneuver my computer the other night. And I'm like, why isn't this thing working? Change the batteries. It still wasn't working. So finally, Brittany came and I said, let me see it. Let's open up Brandon and see it. It was like, sure enough, that's his. And then I was ready to call him and said, you please come get your stuff in my house. But love, love kept me off the phone and kept me out of that moment. Amen? And how many times have we gone to the Lord and said, why did you do this? Why did you prevent this from happening? Why did you let this fall apart on me? And what does he do? He still loves us anyway. He still loves us anyway. And he's like, I can handle it. Give it to me. You can fuss all you want to. And it does not move God. I could be wailing in the floor. And he's like, I'm just going to let you stay, stay there until you get it together. And then come talk to me with some sense. And then I got to get up off the floor, wipe my face, and say, okay, Lord, I'm so sorry. All embarrassed. You know, because it's like, okay, God, because you know how I'm going to behave. Amen. But the love that he has for us. Amen. So why can't we love one another? Amen. Why can't we get along? Exactly. Exactly. Why can't we just get along and love one another? Because he said, I mean, he's already told us this. I'm sending you out as sheep amongst wolves. That's what his word says. So why does it take us by surprise when we had that crazy day at work? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let's look at Romans chapter 12. And if you have, I mean, all of us have some wolves in our life. So Lord, show me how to deal with them, who they may be, and let me walk in wisdom. Amen. And that's where that discernment comes in at. <laughs> Amen. I mean, Amen. Yeah. And it's like, okay, Lord, you show it. Okay, it's, it's just revealed itself. <laughs> but we still have to love. Yeah. And you think about it. Jesus was there with his disciples. He knew that Judas was going to betray yeah. him. Yeah. Before Judas knew that Judas was going to betray yeah. him. Right. And he did not treat him any differently. That's right. Right. He loved him the same as he loved all the other disciples. But if that was us, that person would know. I know where you, who you are, 
and I'm letting you know I know who you are. Because it's going to be revealed in the way it's manifest in my actions. But we're to show the love of Christ. So Romans chapter 12, verses 20 and 21. And the word of God says, instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. And doing this, you will reap burning clothes of shame on their heads. Wow. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Yeah. Yeah. So when you think of that message and you think of that love, when you think of the spirit of love, who is that person that comes to mind? That, Lord, that's the person I need to love them. That's the person that I need to show love to. And even as I was doing this, that person came to mind. And it's like, okay, God, I hear you. Wow. I hear you, God. So I know what I have to do. Amen. I have to own up to that, that I need to show the love because I don't know if they know Jesus. And I don't know how strong their relationship is with the Lord. So what is my responsibility? I'm to show the love of Christ. And I'm to extend love to them, whether it's convenient or not. Right, you may man. stand to your feet. That's right, Pastor. But love Beautiful. and action. Beautiful. So love and action. You still love Brandon, even though he drank the last. I still love Brandon, <laughs> even though he drank my soda. So, so you know, love, I, had, I mean, you know, because I put it in there to be cold yeah. and ready for me. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're not supposed to touch that. <laughs> but I love them. Anyway, amen. 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 And that's what God is saying. Even though I saw you when you did that action, wow. that nobody else saw, but I saw you, but God says, I still love you. God is saying, I saw you when you purposely put your Bible to the side wow. and you picked up that remote. I saw you. He says, but I still love you. Amen. 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 And he says, I heard the words that you said in your mind that you didn't release. Wow. But I heard them. Amen. And he says, I still love you. And that's what God is saying today. Because you know, we can we can we can get in here now. We don't stay in church long. So with some of us, we can come in here and we can fake it for a couple of hours. But God is saying, I see you. But I still love you. Amen. Even though as the word was going forth, your mind was somewhere else. <laughs> but God is saying, I still love you. Jesus. The love of God does not change. Wow. Thank you, love that. It doesn't. The love of God does not change. He is consistent in his love for us. He is consistent in his love for us. And even when we can't seem to love ourselves mm. Mm. because of the mistakes that we've made and the things that's in our story, God says, I still love you. Whether you love yourself or not, God says, he still loves us. And that's why we say, if, if we can only understand and comprehend the depth of love God has for us, love is what drives me into church Amen. Amen. on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Because I love him and I love you all. Amen. And to love God is to love his people. Yes. That you want to do your very best. Wow. That you do feel convicted when you're not in your word like you should be. Amen. Because we love God. And sometimes we don't tell him enough right. just how much we love him. We receive his, and you know, in the scripture, the verse of the day was to um, God who loads us with benefits. And I, when I looked at that from you version, and I looked at that, and it was like, God, that is exactly what you do for us Amen. on a daily basis. You load us with benefits. Wow. Then how can we not bring him our very best? How can you not love someone that loves you unconditionally? Amen. And like you said, we don't know each other's story. We don't know. We know parts of it. Mm -hmm. I may know a chapter or two, 
I may know with Elder Phyllis, I may know five chapters of her story. I don't know her full story. But God is saying, I know every intricate part of your life, and I love you regardless. Amen. That's right. Amen. And God wants us to love yeah. one another. Because Sister D said it's about relationship. And I can't tell you that I love you if I don't reach out. If I don't act on this love. If you call me and say, Pastor Mary, I need to talk to you. Well, I can't talk to you right now. That's not love. And if I'm busy at the moment, I'll be like, okay, I'm involved in this task. But can I call you as soon as I get off work? Sometimes I'll call Elder Phyllis and I know she just woke up. It's like, sis, I know I probably woke up, but I just need to talk to you for a minute. And she says, and she starts. And she listens. And she pours back into me. And that's why, and so I'm so appreciative of that relationship. And that's just one of many. Because sometimes I'll be looking at the clock to see. Elder Phil's gonna get off at 5 o'clock in the morning. So sometimes I say, I need to call her about 5 30 before she gets home. You know, and then sometimes it's like, okay, it's like 1 o'clock. So she should be up this morning, get up soon. So then I'll send a text and it's like, she'll answer the text. I'll, like, I'll give her a few more minutes. Like, praise the Lord, sis, how you doing? And she's like, I, I just got up. Hallelujah. Perfect time. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says that you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son. And that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but would have everlasting life. Father God, let us not take your gift for granted. And Father God, we want to display your love everywhere we go. In the name of Jesus. Because it's not just about when we're in this house or any other house in the world. But Father God, it's about when we go out, that we'll be your ambassadors. That people will see us and know that that's a disciple of Christ. By the love that we show. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask forgiveness right now, Father. For every thought that we did not take captive. For every reckless word that we release into the atmosphere, Father, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we want to display your love everywhere that we go. In our homes, in the workplace, in the grocery store, at the gas station, when we're shopping, in the library, wherever we go, Father, we want to display your love. And Father, we know that we can do this by the power of your Holy Spirit. So Father God, heighten the discernment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I lift up your children right now. Under the sound of my voice, O oh God. That you meet them at their point of need, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, whether it be financial whether it's spiritual, emotionally, mentally, physically. Yes. Father God, yes. you said that you are our Jehovah Jireh, yes. the one yes. that yes. provides. Yes. And you're able to bless above, beyond, and exceedingly more than we can ever think or ask according to the power that works in us. So I pray right now, Father, that faith is renewed today Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Yes. That hope is restored today, oh God, yes. in the name of Jesus. That minds are changed today, Father, in the name of Jesus, and their lives are transformed by the power of your word. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. And we will go forth, Father, as your ambassadors, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we will show love, Father, in the name of Jesus. Real love, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because you love us unconditionally, Father. And help us to love one another, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And how can the sinner man come in except your love draw him? 
And Father, we're to be your hands and your feet in this world today, Lord God. So let your love flow through us, Father. In the name of Jesus. Holding nothing back, God. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Heal marriages today, Father. Lord God, heal addictions today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Men, family relationships. In the name of Jesus. Families need to be healed today, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you in advance, Father. For all that you're doing, God. In the name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, the glory, the honor, the love, the adoration, the worship that you deserve and that you're worthy of, Father. In the name